For exam mini video two, we're going to talk about epistasis um, and a specific pathway, the duplicate recessive um, pathway. Duplicate recessive just means that there are doubles of the recessive alleles. So pretending like the red marker is actually colorless, we start with a colorless precursor, which is our colorless moth. Um, and the only way that it moves through this pathway is by enzyme activation. So enzyme 1 can only be activated um, with a heterozygous or homozygous dominant allele pair. The duplicate recessive, little a, little a, acts kind of like a stop sign um, inhibiting that enzyme so it can't move forward. So if you were to have little a, little a, everything would stop there. But if you have big A, little a, or big A, big A, enzyme 1 is activated, and that just leads you to the colorless intermediate. Now this process repeats itself um, with big B, little b, or big B, big B, which will activate the second enzyme to give the color, unless you have little b, little b, which is your duplicate recessive which also acts as a stop sign. So if you do have little b, little b, you will stop in the pathway at the colorless intermediate. Otherwise, it will continue to give you the blue color. Here's our expected distribution um, of the duplicate recessive. We're gonna have nine to seven. Nine being color um, filled and then seven being colorless. So in our pathway, this is kind of where um, the distribution lies. Keeping this ratio in mind, we do our first test cross, which is a dihybrid cross, and we see the ratio reflected um, in our results. So basically, I split up the two Punnett squares, um, and then we got the phenotypes that match the ratio. So the nine, um, either heterozygous or homozygous dominant, um, is reflected with the blue dots if you add those up and then so on throughout the ratio. Now for cross two, it's a little bit different because it is not a dihybrid cross, which is why we get kind of a four to four to four to four ratio.